Hey guys, Brendonier Productions here. Welcome to the third video in the Python series. In this video, we're going to be talking about basic container types, namely dictionaries, lists, and tuples. I'm making this video right before I go and make myself dinner. I hope all of you have some delicious food in your near future, because I sure do. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to dive right into the Python REPL, and let's start exploring. So we've already talked about basic types, and this is great if you have single pieces of data. For instance, if I have one number, right? Number equals five. I now have a number. But what happens if you have multiple numbers? Let's say you're storing addresses of multiple friends, if you have multiple friends. <laughs> so we can then say number one equals six or seven. Number two equals six. Number three equals eight, right? So we are effectively storing many pieces of information across several of these variables. However, this is clunky, right? If we wanted to print the addresses of all of our friends, if we wanted to print all of these numbers, we'd have to have many print statements. Print number, print number one, print number two. What a pain. So because of that, there are container types, which are basically collections of pieces of data. So the first container type, the basic container type, is called a list, and it's represented in Python with brackets. So if you have any sort of data, you can fill a list with that data. So let's go ahead and try it. So we have all of these number, right? What if we instead just have a single variable called numbers, and we create a list? Five, six, seven, eight. Now this is pretty easy to read. It, it's just a collection of our numbers, five, six, seven, and eight, right? And if we type in numbers, you can see that we get the same exact thing. Uh, what is the type of numbers? It is the list. So anytime you wanna store multiple pieces of data, you can use a list. Now, how do we access elements of this list? You're gonna to wanna to use Python's subscript notation, which is basically, variable name, bracket, and then the index of the item you want to access. Indices are a little confusing and then they start at zero. So the first element of this list has index zero. So number zero, oh, numbers zero is five. Numbers two is seven, right? Because we've got element zero, one, Two. Now, lists are a collection of items, so naturally we'd probably want to know how many items are inside of this list. We can do this with the lane function, which is short for length. So the lane of numbers is four, right? We have four different items inside of this list. And those are the basics of the list. Now, one interesting aspect of Python's lists is that the items inside of the list do not have to be of the same type. So if you're used to other languages, you'll know that uh, when you create a list, you actually have to declare which type of thing is going to be in the list. In Python, that's not so. We can have several different types of things inside of a list. Let's make a new list, call it L, and let's make the first item an integer, the second item a float, the third item a string, and the fourth item a list. Let's make it an empty list. There's no complaints from Python. Everything's good. If we hit L to get the representation of it, you'll see that all of our items are stored, right? Type of L is a list. Type of the first element of L is an int. The second element of L is a float, right? So lists are not bound to the restriction that all items have to be of the same type, which makes for some pretty flexible programming, but can also lead to some confusion if the items in a list are not all the same type that you expected them to be. So that's the list. Similar to a list is a tuple. In Python, a tuple is represented by parentheses instead of square brackets. So if we have a tuple of objects, it looks something like one, two, three. 
Now, what's the difference between a tuple and a list? Well, lists are actually susceptible to all of our common operators. All right, so if we have a list 1, 2, and we add 3, 4, we get a new list, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, if we have 1, 2, and we multiply it by 2, the list is duplicated. We get a single list with our first list kind of extended. All right, this is very similar to strings. Now, tuples are the same way. You can add them together, right? You can multiply them. Oh. <laughs> you can multiply them. You can get the elements directly. If we say t is 1, 2, right? And then we say t of 0, we can get the element directly. However, in lists, our list was called numbers, right? We can get the first element, or we can assign to the first element, right? Numbers 0 equals 2. So now if we look at our list here, you can see that the previous first entry, 5, has been replaced with 2. Tuples, on the other hand, if we create an identical, an identical, an identical tuple, let's call it t numbers, and we'll say 5, 6, 7, 8. If we also try to take the zeroth element, which is 5, and set it to 2, you can see that tuple object does not support item assignment. So a tuple is kind of frozen in time, right? We create a tuple, we can no longer edit individual elements of the tuple. As you've seen, we can grow the tuple by adding another tuple to it, or multiplying it, but we cannot edit individual elements. So that is the primary difference between a list and a tuple. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of functionality of the list that I probably didn't cover. For instance, originally I did not say that we could assign to a list. However, this is, these are the kind of things that uh, you find with time, right? We will explore as time goes on. For instance, another caveat is we have numbers. What happens if we say the zeroth index is a list, a new list? Would you expect the list to grow and the new list to be 1, 2, 2, 6, 7, 8? Would you expect the 2 to be replaced with the items 1, 2? Or would you expect the 2 to be replaced with a whole new list? What happens? It looks like the first element changes to a list. So we just create a multi-typed list by assigning a new type to the first element. So there's all sorts of little caveats with the list. Now the tuple has a little less caveats, but there are still some. Now the final basic container type is a dictionary. Now a list and a tuple, if we have a series, right, the only way we can access these items is by using their index. So if we want the third item, we use index 2. But what if we have data that we don't always want to index by a number? For instance, if we have a translation program, a, this is where the name dictionary comes from. If we have a translation program that maps one word to another, we don't want to know the position of our original word inside of our list. We instead want to have a key and value. We want the key to be the original word and the value to be the translated word. This is where dictionaries come in handy. So dictionaries are represented in a kind of easy syntax, but uh, takes a little getting used to. So we use a curly brace here, and then we have the key. Let's make this key a string hello, and the value. We are going to make the value world. So the key and the value are separated by a colon. And when we hit enter, we get the results. We can store this in a variable. Let's name the variable D for dictionary. And the type of D is a dict, which is short for a dictionary. I'm trying not to mess up the pronunciation of that word. So 
uh, if we try to access the first element of the dictionary, right, just like we would with a list, we get a key error of zero. And this is because instead of the keys being indices in dictionaries, we get to use the actual key that we declared. So what is the hello item of D? It's world, right? We can also create rather complex dictionaries. So let's go ahead and make this a little more complex. Let's have the first element be hello world. And then a comma separates elements, just like in list. So the second element, let's make the key hola and the value mundo. The third, goodbye moon. And then we can also mix types, right? We don't have, uh, not everything has to be the same. So we can have a key of five and a value of value, right? We can have a key of 2.6 and a value of 1. And everything is fine. We're going to go ahead and close this dictionary. So if we hit D to get the representation, it collapses it a little bit, but it's basically the same thing. Now we can start accessing values. So D of hello is world. So similarly, D of hola is going to be mundo, right? Now D of 5 is value just as we created. However, this syntax is a little bit confusing because we don't know whether D is a list or a dictionary. We can also do D of 2.6 to get one, uh, but using floats as keys is a little dubious because like I mentioned before, the float representation problem. Now, just like with lists and tuples, you can add dictionaries together. So D plus key value, oh, well, apparently you cannot add dictionaries together. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So so like I mentioned before, if it doesn't really make sense, you cannot add them. And I suppose in the dictionary world, it doesn't make sense to add two dictionaries together. I guess what we would expect to happen is the second dictionary is merged into the first dictionary. However, Python doesn't let you do this because of the case where there are name collisions. Instead, there is a function called update. So if we d.update and give a new dictionary key value, you'll see that d now contains key and value. Update also overwrites all keys. So we can't add dictionaries together, nor can you subtract them together. Can we multiply? Let's find out. We cannot multiply. Looks like dictionaries are a little restrictive. Right, and we can combine all of these. We can have a list of dictionaries, right? A list, hello world, or a list of dictionaries where the values are tuples. Make things a little confusing. Uh, goodbye goodbye the values can be integers here right and here's a list no problem uh, let's go ahead and save that list l equals so what's the first element of l it's the dictionary where the key is hello so what's right so here we're getting the first element of l and then on top of that, we're getting the value where the key is hello. And this gives us a tuple, one, two, three. So let's go ahead and get the first or the first index of this tuple, two. Right, so this is a little strange, but it's just the way of Python. So these are the primary container types in Python. There are a few more container types. Uh, another popular one is set, but that's a little more advanced container type. This is just the basics of how to use a dictionary, list, and tuple. Thanks for watching this video. I hope this was informative. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and leave a comment. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'm off to make some dinner.